Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 52, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we've got some harder use knives, or at least some slightly heavier duty knives that still have a bit of a gentlemanly vibe to them. Uh, some of my knife influencers, influences, we're, we're going to talk about those, and some cool Italian knives as well. Let's get into it. So welcome to Knife AQ, where we essentially pull uh, all the questions for this series from our comments section. That's where we feed the beast, so to speak. Uh, so if you're sitting on a question and you're uh, thinking about having it answered, just leave it in the comments section, and it might have a chance to have itself featured in a future episode. Uh, this week, first question comes from Robert W., who asks, Something went wrong. <laughs> All right, so today's first question does come from Robert W., uh, who asks, uh, I've always carried a gentleman's knife, either a leek or a urban trapper, but I want something larger in the three and a half to four inch range with easy deployment that can handle the tough stuff but it doesn't look overly tactical or outdoor. Can you recommend something more gentlemanly in the larger folding knife category? Sure thing. Uh, first off, the leak has always been a really great choice for a, uh, a more budget-oriented gentleman's knife or just general purpose EDC. I think it works really well. Um, but both of the, uh, the knives you mentioned, the Urban Trapper as well, not, neither of them are like super expensive. Uh, so I'm gonna try and keep things on the, uh, the little more attainable side of the spectrum for you. Uh, first one I want to mention is the Civivi Asticus, the full-size model. Uh, D2 versions of this started about 55 bucks, very affordable for a nearly four-inch blade. But this one right here, lean into the, uh, the gentlemanly factor a little more. We've got a Damascus blade and carbon fiber scales, and this guy comes in about 76.50 right now. But we've got a lot of blade length there. Very graceful profile overall. A lot of handle length to hold on to. Not so much in the girth factor. It's not necessarily a hand filling grip. You know, you, you kind of want to walk a little bit of a, uh, a fine line on the trade-off there. It's going to work well for some larger cuts you might need, but obviously not a dedicated, like, hard-use knife, if you know what I mean. But it is going to carry very easily. It folds up quite narrow in fact the blade nestles in there very nicely and with that flat carry it's going to sit in the pocket very well without feeling too bulky deep carry pocket clip to keep things uh, discreet looking and then when it comes time to deploy you've got ball bearings in the pivot and a really good action on a really good looking knife as well now if you'd rather have something that is a little bit more hand filling so to speak i've got another option here uh, also reasonably priced uh, the artisan cutlery Centauri. This particular one's a Knife Center exclusive. A little bit more expensive though. It comes in at about 120 bucks. But really strong blade profile here. Here, This is a Ray Laconico design, about three and a half inches. So closer, uh, 3.46. So it's in the range. It's right under that three and a half inch length. High flat grind as opposed to the hollow grind on the Asticus and that aggressive modified Warncliffe shape ready for some really heavy cuts and a little bit more hand filling. Not, again, it's not gonna be something like, you know, a BK-16 like we're gonna talk about later, um, but a little bit more in the girth factor there. But it's actually interesting, when I hold the two up, it doesn't really look fatter than the Asticus, but something about the way it feels, maybe because it's not as tall, you're able to get maybe a, a fuller feeling grip on it. In any case, nice and classy looks to back up the strong profile here, the strong working profile here. Uh, this particular one, we've got pack of wood handles, so a little bit more of an old school look with gold anodized hardware. Not a deep carry pocket clip, but a very fancy looking milled titanium clip here, also anodized gold. It's going to have a really nice look. Ball bearings in the pivot here as well, nested liner lock, which is quite nice. And it is a front flipper, but you know, you wanted ease of opening. It is a pretty easy front flipper to actuate. It's not uh, not one of the ones that I find a little bit finicky. Most th most folks, I think, are going to be able to use this pretty well. Uh, VG10 Damascus here, so a bit of an upgrade from the 9CR stainless that they use on the Asticus, and just another nice vibe. And I think if you like the leak already, 
think the Centauri is especially, I'm going to lean into that recommendation a little bit more, I think might be right up your alley. Although, I say that, I didn't bring an Urban Trapper to compare, but there's maybe a little bit of Urban Trapper vibes to the Asticus as well. All right, next question comes from Ogen Matic, or Ogen Matic. Uh, DCA, who were the most influential people throughout your life that either sparked or continued to fuel your passion for knives? Uh, this is fun to think about. I, I, I like looking back. Um, obviously, my dad and the Boy Scouts initially. Uh, that's where kind of all of this sprung out from. Uh, but then as I got more into it in, uh, in the later years and really delved deep, there's two people that come to mind uh, very prominently. Uh, the first is Mr. L.T. Wright of L.T. Wright Handcrafted Knives, of course. Um, walked up to him at a show one time, introduced myself. Uh, I'd been writing for a, a, a blog for a little bit at that point, and it was just kind of an introduction, and he reached out uh, about a week later and said, hey, we'd love to send you a knife if you'd like to review it. And so he sent me this GNS right here. And it was really cool. He's always been really supportive right from that very start. Uh, this GNS is neat. It was the first time any manufacturer or maker had ever sent me a knife to review. All the reviews I'd done at that point were of my own personal knives. And this was just the start of getting to know LT and getting to know his company. Um, obviously, you guys who know my Nordsmith project know that I, I work with LT to produce those uh, in his shop as well. Uh, I've taken several knife making classes with LT, including the, uh, the intermediate class where I got to make a GNS compared here to, you know, this version right here. And this is, was, uh, this was completely hand cut out. It wasn't from one of their pre-existing blanks. And we did all the shaping there over the course of a weekend, all the construction, the grinding, everything. Uh, so not only did he give me a boost in my, my early writing career, which is, you know, transitioned into this video career, um, but he's also taught me a lot over the years. Uh, the other person that I've learned so much from over, over time has been Mr. Ethan Becker. Uh, this particular knife, uh, in, in particular particularness, uh, <laughs> comes to mind uh, with, good, with good feelings when I think about Ethan. Um, I visited him at his place uh, after just having met him at a blade show, and he gave me this particular knife. Not with the scales the way they are, I've, I've modified them since. but. Gave me that knife, and that was kind of the start of, the, or the weekend I spent with him there was kind of the start of a friendship that goes to this day. I learned so much about knife design from him, things to look for, how to evaluate or critique a blade or a handle specifically. Obviously, you know, blades are a little easier than handles. Handles are actually really tough to get right. And those two guys especially have opened so many doors for me, have taught me so much, have introduced me to so many other great people that... I'm forever going to be in their debt. Love those guys. All right, next question comes from MGT308. Uh, hey, DCA, my father is from Italy, and I'd like to buy him an EDC from his home country. Uh, there are so many great options. Could you help narrow it down to just two or three? Grazie. All right, so I do have, uh, I've got three here, and you didn't really mention kind of what style your dad likes, just that you want something Italian. Um, so I'm making a couple assumptions here. Uh, we'll think... Dad's maybe a little bit old school, perhaps. Um, so, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three recommendations that kind of blend some of the old school with more modern techniques, more of the new school stuff. And of course, all Italian in their flair and construction. The first one is a slip joint, but it's nothing like the old school slip joints out there. This is the Lion Steel Thrill. Very cool knife. Uh, priced for the titanium versions at about 200 bucks. Uh, aluminum comes in a fair bit uh, less expensive, about 120. Uh, but those are have, have some more vibrant colors. I went with kind of the classier, more subdued color here. Again, not knowing your dad's style, but you can check all of them out, of course. Blade Steel M390, just over three inches long, full flat grind, very nice, nice snap on the walk and talk there. Very satisfying to operate. But the the new school elements come in uh, to combine with the old school mechanism here in the handle construction itself. Two things especially going on. One, integral handle. This is a single wraparound piece with an integrated back spring. There's no separate leaf spring. This isn't a pinned together knife uh, with different, uh, different scales on either side or different uh, pieces on either side held together. Super, super solid construction here. And 
a bit fancy. Something just really nice and really cool to be proud of. Uh, one of the cool things too that you see from Lion Steel's influence or from Lion Steel's heritage of doing titanium frame lock flippers that are integrally constructed, you've got a nice lock bar insert there or what on a frame lock would be called a lock bar insert. So you have a nice hard piece of steel mating up with the hardened steel of the blade. The other cool thing is the pocket clip. It's when you're using the knife completely flush inside the handle. It's called their H whale clip. And there's essentially a button on the other side. When you push that out, it pops the clip up and you're able to put it back in your pocket. And as soon as you draw it, it's spring loaded to pull it right back in. Really cool solution right there and really cool knife overall. One of my favorite releases of a couple years ago when this came out. All right, next up, uh, if you want something with a locking mechanism, I've got a titanium frame lock flipper here, uh, but it again, kind of blends with some older influences. This is the MKM flame, a Michael Zeba design, which kind of takes the, uh, takes its inspiration. I think more than anything else from classic pen knives, just very simple pocket knives, but you've got, a titanium frame lock here. You've got ball bearings in the pivot for your flipping action. You've also got a milled titanium pocket clip here. Again, nice classy presentation there. Very easy to carry. Uh, this particular one's anodized blue, but there's also carbon fiber. There's a standard anode version. There's micarta as well. Just a really cool little snappy knife. Uh, M390 blade steel again, uh, two or just under three inches. Um, M390 is actually something you see a lot on a great number of Italian knives. Uh, just they're, I guess they're so close to a bowler who makes the steel. They tend to, to tend to gravitate towards that a lot. Uh, another feature you tend to see on a lot of Italian knives, which actually you don't see on this particular one. I'll pick the thrill back up to show you is a crowned spine. You get that rounded nature here. Don't know why most of the uh, Italian makers do that. I just know they do. And I just know it's really classy and really good feeling. And it's nice to look at too. It gives you a little more visual interest than just a, uh, a more flat spine. Uh, price on the, uh, the Zeba design there uh, comes in about 200 bucks for this one. Uh, a couple of the versions fluctuate in price a little bit. You can also get a, a, uh, a dagger style, still single edge, not double edge, but a dagger style blade if you want something a little more uh, with a little more attitude. Um, so those two knives are a little bit smaller, but if you want to get them something a little bit larger, uh, maybe with a little bit more, uh, you know, moofery to the blade for lack of a better word. Uh, this one right here, the Viper turn again, blend some kind of old school influences in its backlock construction and its shape here reminds me a lot of the, uh, a lot of the custom buoy knives out there that a lot of the ABS makers make a lot of the blacksmiths do. We got a really, really cool knife here. Uh, also coming in at just under 200 bucks. Also M390 steel, also a crowned spine here with the long swedge out the, uh, the front. So you don't really see the crowning there. Back onto the handle titanium with integrated bolsters, micarta on this particular version. I went with kind of the, the rugged option or one of the rugged options for this as well. It has a deep carry pocket clip here on the backside. Some versions of this knife don't have the pocket clip though. Keep that in mind. Uh, that gives you some options though. Maybe he's not a pocket clip kind of guy. I don't know. Uh, some of those versions that don't have the pocket clip clip come with a little pocket leather sheath, which is pretty nice. And you can get some fancier stuff like Ram's horn, or you can go with some like more modern stuff, like some of the, uh, the carbon fibers. We've got a cool knife center exclusive with a, a green jungle wear carbon fiber. It's going to be pretty cool too, but I really dig this knife. It's got a lot of style to it. And to me, that's as an American, we usually think of Italian and style like Italian flair kind of mashed up together. And I think this one really fits the bill. Certainly it's going to work quite well in a utility standpoint too. mid mounted lockback ball bearings in the pivot, which you don't see too often with a lockback and partially as a result, you can actually flick that blade open with one of the thumb studs very easily. Really, really cool knife. And I uh, hope one of these options leads you in a direction that uh, you think your old man might appreciate. So thanks for the question. All right. Now we come to Matthew Orlando who asks, what is the best self-defense knife for a novice knife user to take on night dog walks or something to keep in a pocket or purse? Uh, for the novice, when you're talking about self-defense, what I uh, would have to recommend is classes or training. I'm not going to say, you know, there's, there's no magic bullet for this sort of thing. Uh, and I, I'm certainly not versed in, in it myself either. Like, 
get get some get some know-how, get some knowledge, get some training on what to do. Um, as to what knife you might want to take, take what, what you're comfortable with, honestly. But I think the more one of the more useful things, more important things uh, that I tend to, to gravitate towards for that type of situation is a nice tactical light. Again, I'm not tactically trained, but it feels good to have a very bright light. You can use it as a distraction element or just use it to see where your dog takes a little number two and pick that up, you know? Now, a couple things to look for on a tactical light. I've got an Olight M2R right here, uh, the M2R Warrior, uh, 110 bucks uh, and Lumens 1800, exceptionally bright. Uh, but you see a couple things here that you wanna see on a quote unquote tactical light. Uh, the first is a switch here at the back to activate the uh, the light so that you can you know have it basically oriented like so with the with your thumb over that switch so you can momentarily push the light on you want a, a, the capability to do a momentary on with that switch so you can flash it if you need to you also typically will see like a crenellated bezel because when we're talking about like innate human instinct we're all a little more familiar probably with throwing fists than we are you know poking with a knife and that's going to come a little more naturally but when it comes to your blade stick with something you're you're comfortable with and there's no really good answer but if i if i had to give one if pressed go with something maybe you know a little bit larger and something you can use quickly and again that you're comfortable with um, but do not take this as legal advice or legal defense or anything of course we're not lawyers just have to throw that out there as always uh, which brings us now to the lightning round. Uh, first comes from Eliseo Calderon. Uh, hey, David, I want to get a knife for my uncle. Uh, dad's knives, uncle knives here coming up. Uh, he is a hardworking man and he cuts anything and everything with his knives. He needs a knife with a tough steel and a very sturdy pocket clip. All of his clips are broken because they get caught on things and break. So I think the key thing here is going to be go with something with a milled pocket clip. Uh, I showed the Centauri here earlier. You've got a very sturdy clip there. And if you want to give the knife a fighting chance, go with something like this. Um, this particular one might be, I don't know, it doesn't seem to fit the vibe of your question here because this is the fancier version, but we've got a red and black Micarta version with an S35 VN blade that might be more to your liking. And it comes with that very sturdy clip. Um, use that as a starting point. Check that out if that doesn't do, do it for you. That, that would be the key feature I would look for for your uncle there. All right, Jeremy Page. Uh, hey DCA, looking to get a gift for a friend who wants a non-auto folder with a lock shut function. It's not my usual taste, but do you have any recommendations in the roughly three inch blade, roughly $50 range? Thanks. Uh, sometimes I feel like you guys are uh, writing these questions because you already know the answer. There, there's one obvious thing that fits those criteria that is the first thing that comes to mind. That's the Kershaw leak we looked at earlier. 45 bucks or so. It is spring assisted, but it's not an automatic. And you do have their little tip lock slider there at the back. So very unlikely, unless that were to also break, that the blade is going to be able to open inadvertently. Easy carrying knife, easy deploying knife, and it is a great gift for all kinds of people, including non-knife people. Which you didn't say that's the case, but I'm kind of assuming that this uh, this friend is a non-knife person because if they were, they'd probably be able to, you know, make their own decisions on this or be able to find what they're looking for a little bit better. Since they came to you for a suggestion, that's my guess anyway. Uh, really good knife, Kershaw Leak. That's the way to go. All right, Eric Holden asks, does anyone make Damascus style, Damascus? Damascus, as opposed to Nightmascus? Fighter of the Nightmascus. Um, <laughs> does anyone make Damascus style blades with S35VN or S45VN as their base steel? Would that even be wise? Um, so most Damascus blades tend to be made with uh, more traditional ingot steels, uh, often are you know folded together and, and created that way. That's the, the more traditional way to do it at this point. Um, S35, et cetera, is a powder metallurgy process. So you don't see, it's a very different process of making that. And while this company, Damasteel, doesn't use S35 or S45, they do make a powder metallurgy based Damascus. As far as I know, they're the only ones out there doing it. Uh, so that you can get a specifically formulated powder steel with the performance you want, 
with the good looks of the Damascus style. Uh, you can see it right here. This is a Benchmade Tengu Gold Class. Comes in about 550 bucks. Uh, but yeah, look for look for Damasteel. If it's a Damascus blade and it says Damasteel, I don't know uh, what exact formula their their base metal is you know based upon, but it does perform pretty well by all accounts that I've ever seen. So check those guys out. All right, next question comes from Brandon the Crow. Uh, here's a hot take question. Do you think there's a place for clones? Uh, for example, buying a clone to make sure you actually like how a knife feels in hand before you spend high amounts of money on the real deal. Um, no way, man. Th this is one where it, it really bugs me. Theft is theft. You know, if, if you're a designer and you've put your design out there or a company, you've put your thing out there to see someone come in, copy your homework and put it out at some bargain basement price. That is the, just one of the worst feelings. And I, you're trying to justify it by saying, oh, you know, see how I actually like it before I spend money on the real deal. Come on, man. Theft is theft. Don't buy clones. And if you don't like it, there's a used market. There you go. Check out, uh, check that out if you want. All right. Finally, we come to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Drew Ryan. Is there anything that excites Thomas? Does it have an engine? I was going to say like probably old ratty Pontiacs that no one else really wants. That'd do it. Yeah, that would do it for him. Um, and that the logo is kind of like a knife. Kind of. Well, it's an arrowhead. It's kind of knife related. That's that's a specialized knife. Yeah, a very yeah. fast knife. It's a fast knife on a stick. Yes. <laughs> that's all the time we've got for today, folks. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. And if you have your own questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. If you want to get your hands on any of these guides, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program so that you're going to earn some free money on your next knife when you spend money on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.